Well, good evening, everybody. It is Brad. And Krista. With the Big Family Homestead. Yay! The crowd goes wild. I hope that you are ready for another exciting... And soon ins- to be classic. Or will you go for it? No. You just that, I'm well. supposed to say soon to be classic. No. We never try. We never practice this at all. Let's do that again. Okay. Okay. Hey, everybody. I'm Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead. Yay! Whatever. And then... Um, oh, what were we going to say? Oh, yeah. Hope you're ready for another exciting and soon to be classic edition, edition. of the Sunday Night uh, Live guys, with the Big Family crazy. Homestead. Yeah, throws things. We look at this. Look at our our thing tonight. We've got so much stuff we're dealing with, guys. We are organized like people who have organizational skills that are good. Okay. It's true. Okay. Hey, Bandana Grandma, how are you guys doing? Hello, Why don't guys. You say hi to everybody, and then we will get. On with the business of the business. The business of the business. The business. We are in the business of doing business. All right. Baker Mom, Archer, getting started on homesteading, self-reliant roadshow. Diana at Justice Acres. Phoebe Long. Ray Barnes. uh, Homestead, Franklin, North Carolina. That's Scott, right? Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mike DeFazio. Dave, thinking of others. Awesome. Steve Gunnick. Mega Candy Lady. Papa Jim. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Papa Jim. (laughs) Uh, Vernon and Grandma So Happy Homestead, Melanie. Actually, there was a little girl in my Sunday school class today. Her name was Melanie, and she was so darn cute. She, oh my gosh! She cursed like a sailor. No, no she not did not. not. She was very sweet, very, very <laughs> well behaved little Excuse girl. Excuse me. Whoa, <laughs> that escalated quickly. Oh my Melanie. goodness. <laughs> Uh, Jan and Sharon, A H Delivery, Wayne, Dave, Honor. Michigan Daffodil, the Woods Family Homestead, Prem Farm, Bandana Grandma. Oh, very cool. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we saw another person who's on from Auburndale. Yeah, which we're is in, near Marshfield. Yeah, well, we're in Wausau <laughs> and slash up. or Marshfield at a least lot. a couple times a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and Roy is here. How's Roy. it going? So. All right, so welcome, everybody. Oh, wait, I hope. Out. Inger's here. Inger Eggermont. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Sunday, and tonight we've got a ton of stuff that we want to get to. The main theme of the evening is going to be a cow, a family cow, um, either beef Don't or dairy. Don't have a cow, man. Don't have a cow, man. <laughs> either beef or dairy, we're going to talk about the pluses and the minuses, and so as we get going... If you are in this crowd right now and you have either had a cow for either dairy or beef, mm-hmm. or you either have one or have had one, mm-hmm. chime in and let us know as we kind of get going there. Okay, so here we go. First things first, Mama, just to recap, you, you've you been a sewing beast and you've been sewing and Grace has been learning the, mm-hmm. the technique. What have you been, what's up? Well, I've sewn a lot of skirts in the last couple of weeks. Um, I've sewn um, a couple of wrap skirts for me, one for Grace. Um, I sewed a A-line skirt for her. Um, Hope got a wrap skirt without the wrap. Um, instead of six panels, I did five panels and then used some elastic. She absolutely loves that. I uh, made Ruth a skirt. Just a just another skirt with elastic, mm-hmm. and she absolutely loves. She wears it pretty much every day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so, I, I'm I'm thinking the next project is going to be a reversible wrap skirt. Ooh. Yeah. So rewind so need, retro style. Uh, right. So I need to have some kind of coordinating fabrics mm. that I can. Right. Like cords and then stripes. Um. No. Okay. So all right. <laughs> A lot of, lot, of, uh, <laughs> a lot of sewing things going on there. Great. Uh, let's see. Last week we had a great interview with Tyler Woods, mm-hmm. the author and rock star of the 11th Hour Preparedness book, and that just went really well. I was so happy to see that it was a blessing for a lot of you guys. I kind of, when you take an interview like that, you never know what you're going to get because, mm-hmm. you, you know, when you're talking about preparedness, some people are like, yes, I'm with it. I want to know more. I want to learn. And other people are like, why are you trying to scare us? Blah, blah, blah. No, no, And you at know all. what? And that's not the point. It's so. just, just it went very be well. aware. Not, right. not trying to scare, just be aware. Well, and, and uh, <clears throat> in addition to the, uh, the interview from last week, this week we've got a very special interview. We're interviewing J. Null Zero. And if you don't know J. Null, you need to know. He is 
he's such a great guy. He looks really scary <laughs> on his that. no, I no, I'm not done. He looks really scary, but he's really not. He is the sweetest guy. I mean, just well, he's he's a funny dude. Yeah. When you see the when you see the interview, I hope you'll be blessed by it cuz yeah. he really is a great guy. Yes. He, he's just, you know, he's big. He is. He's big. He's big and but he is so welcome. We went to dinner at th for Thanksgiving a couple of years yeah. back. And he was so welcoming and kind yeah. and just just really, really great person. So So that interview is gonna come out on Tuesday, unless, you know, something weird happens. Um, give him a quick update on the homeschool. I know there's a lot of homeschool families that watch. Yeah. So just a uh, twenty seconds. We have ten weeks to go. We are almost done. Yes. Mom's sanity will come back and I will be able to think. Well, no, that's not true. I, I, mm. I can think every day. It's just, you know, getting, I love the, um, uh, the structure and the kids love the structure of having school every day. And when we, when we took off for Christmas, it was complete chaos, complete chaos. Yeah. We need to have, we need to have st some structure, but when there's no school on, I'm very relaxed and eh, it's just anyway. So 10 weeks to go. And then summer. T minus 10. Yeah. And, nine. and I don't know about all of you who homeschool, but I'm already planned out for next year. <laughs> oh, gracious. So. so, yeah, no, don't even. <laughs> don't even. No, I see I know. what you're seeing. I know. Uh, been a lot of snow lately. Uh, if you guys have not noticed in the, um, in the news, mm -hmm. we've been getting a dumped on. Right. Yeah. We've been getting a dumped we got, on. We got... I think two feet the last time. Yeah, and it was it's a actually lot. it's actually getting to be quite the challenge because the equipment that we have is designed not to handle as much right. as we mm -hmm. have. Right. I mean, that, we got that snow this past week, and he was plowing. He plowed three or four times that day. Yeah. And it still it piled just was, up. It just and, came so quick. Right. And there was so much in such a short time that we have not a lot of place to take it. So. It's, All right, yeah. Mama, you're going to have to do it. Move, move the guitar. It, I know, I have horns. I love that. Move the guitar. I don't want to move it. <laughs> well, be careful because you're tethered. Yes, I know. Here, actually, I, I got it. Move the guitar. I, I, I can it. do it, honey. Just set her down there. And there's a guitar stand right here. Yeah, but that one's kind of funky. It's real X-wing shape. Right. You're funky. We're getting at it again today, says North Star Prep Setter. I don't think so. We, she just checked the... Uh, I just checked the weather. There's no snow. Not today. No. Yeah, Wednesday is what we saw too, as yeah. well. Ah, delivery. Right. Yeah, it said three to f or four or five inches on Wednesday, so they probably will cancel Awana and uh, youth group again. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay, other stuff going on. Yeah, snow. It's mm -hmm. always it's always fun. Mm -hmm. um, okay, here's a question, and I'm 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 using this time very sh this short amount of time very selfishly. I'm gonna. I'm, it's you'll see what I'm asking for. As Mama does the homeschool thing, one of the one of the um, pieces of software that we used to use for our kids mm -hmm. to learn their math facts mm -hmm. was called Alan Alan's Math. It was just a quiz program. It's quiz them addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. It's an old program mm -hmm. that they I have not seen anybody update. We lost our disk, and mm -hmm. what we want is just something simple for addition, mm -hmm. multiplication, subtraction, and division that we can dial it in to, like our kids, like David, he memorized his multiplication through 16s. Well, yeah. 16s. Was it 16s? Yes. Uh, because you can dial it in however you want it. Mm -hmm. So he was like, da 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 But we can't find the dang program no. anymore. Mm -mm. If you no. can find one that we can, you know, we would be greatly appreciative if you if mm -hmm. you knew of a quiz program. We don't want something that's online based. No, I want something that is either downloadable to the computer um, and is not Common Core. I don't want anything to do with that. I don't want Khan Academy. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't want any of those. I just want a simple. Basic, um, basic quiz, program. quiz program, and I've looked at different apps, and they don't do what um, what Alan's math did. It timed them. Mm -hmm. It kept track of what they got right and, and what wrong. they got wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it took it. It kept track of how long it took them. Mm -hmm. 
So well, Steve Gunnick is saying look into IXL. We most certainly will. You want to write? I don't have a pencil. I don't have a pencil either. I'll well, just write. Can, I'll just well, make a note. Be, no, it'll be in the uh, it'll be in the chat. It's recorded, huh? I know, but I won't go in look back at it. Okay, okay, whatever. I can. Whatever. IXL is that some IXL thing? must be. Uh, but anyway, so if you find something, we're going to look into that one. But if you find something or know something, it would be great because. We, want, we don't want it to be online. We want to be able to download the program, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay, so let's see what else. Everything else going on. Oh, taxes. They're done. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. They're done, dun, dun. <laughs> Boy, was that a stressful, stressful day. Yeah, it really was. And as I'm going through it, I made a mistake. But... We went through and we had to delete stuff and start over, and we finally got it figured out. I figured out what the mistake was. <coughs> I I clicked the button that said we were out of the country for more than six months of the year. We're like, what? How do we owe so much money? Right. Wait, no, time out. That's not right. And I was like, whoa. And, and so after going through it a few times, she figured out that that was all it was, and then it went from owing so much money to getting a little bit back, so mm -hmm. we were super happy about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You and know? then today I helped Claire with her taxes. First time. First time, so. <gasps> First time. <laughs> oh, boy. She got, well, you know, she's a kid. Never had a job before in mm -hmm. terms of, like, working where you're going to get taxes and taken right. out and all that kind of stuff. Right. She got seven bucks back. Yeah. She's oh, going to yeah. buy something real, real nice. nice. <laughs> Yeah. Oh goodness. Okay, so Please. other stuff. I'm just I'm just thinking, guys. We've had quite the um, quite the week, but it's been mostly logistics. Just trying to make sure we can get vehicles in and out of the driveway and food to the animals and mm -hmm. and what are you doing? I am typing. Somebody suggested Ray's arithmetic. That makes for a great live show. We should. You we be should. quiet. Maybe we should. You were talking. So. Anyway, so what do you want to talk about? We were moving feed <laughs> and snow. We had to shovel a bunch of snow so that oh we could boy. get a bale of hay out to the cows yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, God. oh, is Ian here? I thought I see somebody saying hi to Ian, but I, I didn't see Ian. Well, if you're here, Ian, mm -hmm. hello. All right, so other stuff just, oh, I know what it is. It's time, to, it's time for our channel shout outs. Oh my gosh, I almost, you know, channel shout outs. All right, there's enough of that. Oop, but I got to turn the jazz and the snow off. Oh, thank you. Jeez, oh, Pete's. I got to turn so that off. That is strange. Okay. <laughs> so, um, channel shout outs, guys. This is the portion of the evening where you are not only permitted mm -hmm. to shout out whomever's channel you want, even if it's your own. Mm -hmm. Not only are you permitted, you are encouraged. Mm -hmm. So, as we talk, you're going to type and say who you're watching, who you're liking, who you're listening to. Mama's going to read as many of, of them as she can. And we're going to do what not very many other channels do. And we're actually going to take focus off of us and put it on to whomever you want to talk about right. for just a minute. Yep. So channel shout outs, out, out, out. <laughs> Have we killed it? Because there's a delay. So got enough time? Right. There you go, I Mama. think so. Uh, R.I.G. Outdoors. Cat and Carp. Cat I've, not and heard carp. That. I've not heard that one. Cat Lover's here. How's it going? What's up, Cat Lover? Homestead Tessie. And I'll wait a few minutes or a few seconds. I think we're good. Don't, this, Rainbow you, Valley you Ranch, Moss Family TV, Late Bloomer. Ooh. Okay. Is that the kind you wear? Clean out coupon, <laughs> clean out couponing the Holler Homestead. Um, Rogue Prepper, Red, Red Poppy Ranch, Dixie Living Homestead, Fundamental Home. Um, North Star Prep Stead are dining on a dime. V oh, now here it goes. VW Family Farm Alaska, Alaska Prep Stedder. Um, shoot. Uh, Hewitt Homestead, our half acre homestead. Um, <laughs> Freedom Homestead, Freedom Makers, Roots and Refuge. Oh, I can't read them all. Sorry, guys. Um, cheap Homesteading, Summers in Alaska, Needy Homesteader, Smith Family Ranch. Fundamental Home, Roots and Refuge, Limna Acres, Starry Sustainable Living with God, Life in the UP, Green Acres Workshop, um, Big Family Devotions, <laughs> Views on the Road, VW far Family Farm, My Blind Mama's Messy Kitchen. That's fun. That's fun. 
<laughs> Red Poppy Ranch in White DIY Dubois Homestead Dubois. Green Acres Homestead. I said it right this you got time. It. You got living it. on a dime. <laughs> um, I just said living on a dime. Right. You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Yeah. So here's the thing. You guys know that we have from time to time. We'll we'll use this time to shout out a channel. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll shout out um, uh, a, website. a website or even a ministry that we are really liking on. But I got to tell you what, there's a little thing that I have to show you. I know I showed it in a video, but we don't usually use a thing as our channel shout out, but we're going to. And I'll tell you why. This stupid little device, this thing has saved our bacon so many times in the last week. Mm -hmm. It's just a battery booster. Right. But it's a lithium ion battery booster. This thing probably weighs a pound and a half, maybe two pounds. Maybe maybe a pound. And it's just a lithium ion battery. But yeah. this stinking little thing has been strong enough to, to start our full size van mm -hmm. four times. Yeah. Yeah. Without a charge. It's still fully charged. Right. It's still fully charged. Right. And so I, I just wanted to show you guys because I know that there's a lot of folks that live where it gets cold and your batteries mm -hmm. are a problem. And that's exactly what's happening with ours. Mm -hmm. Our battery is dying. And this yeah. little thing, this no code dealy. If you have an issue, I can't recommend it highly enough. We don't work mm -hmm. with this company or anything like all. that. Mm -mm. But um, I just no. couldn't believe it because it's it's been working again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to lug around those big ones and have have it plug in and then I the you know the jumper cables that you have attached to that big oh. box yeah, thing. Yeah, no, this thing is crazy. No, this is it. I know, but those scare me. These don't scare me. You know what else doesn't scare me? Marsupials? No, you got it backwards. You didn't uh, get it right. No. Frankenstein doesn't scare no, me. No, you're right. Franken <laughs> what Frankenstein scares doesn't scare me. What scares me? Marsupials cuz they're fast. <laughs> It was like a Kevin Pollack. He was like yeah. uh, he was doing an impersonation of Christopher Walken. Uh -huh. Obviously, I can't do the Christopher Walken part, but no. I remember the no. marsupials scare me. Right, because they're fast. Right, but stop it. I didn't touch you. What would it be done with these? It? You cannot touch them together easily. And the, no, they won't spark. Right, they won't spark. See, it doesn't. Well, no, no, that's not why, honey. It Why? actually has smart technology in the oh, device. Oh, looky there is so, so smart. You can't it can't short itself out. Okay, well the circuitry that's good, says because it ah. doesn't scare me. So like if you went like this, nothing's gonna happen. Well, and who never mind. <laughs> As you're going, I can't make them shock. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> anyway, we love the device. It's been working great. There is a link to and, the battery thingy down below. Yes, and we are planning on getting a new battery for the van, but that one just, it came in handy. I, I needed to charge the, I needed to go to church, and we couldn't go to church because the van wouldn't start one day when it was really, really mm -hmm. cold. So we put that on, and it started right away. So. Well, and I just, I, I, I know it's, I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to get over this. I'm going to move on. Mm -hmm. But just this, it's so tiny. This yeah. thing has a thousand amps, guys. A thousand amps in it. I've used this to start the stupid tractor, <laughs> you know. And that's with like from the cold, you know. And it's. I will say, okay, one thing that is a really irritating thing with this thing for me, the way that you charge it is with a USB. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I know they give you the little device to plug into the wall, but it's just, it's like, I'd rather have, I want the plug. I just want to give me a plug. I want to plug it into the wall. Yeah. But, so I'll have to get over that. Anyway, moving Home on. Homesteading with the Herberts is asking what size is that one? This one is the 1,000 amp, uh, 7,000 joules. Yeah. And um, it's great. I I can't even tell you. I, we've done four charges on it. Mm -hmm. And I have, it's still, look, it's at yeah. 100% still. Yep. So anyway, I got to move on because I could talk about nerdy stuff till I drive everybody away. Mm -hmm. It is true. Mm -hmm. I saw some folks were making sure that I wasn't uh, snapping the papers. So, yeah, <laughs> got to keeping it real, people. Keeping it real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Oh, I know. We are going to be giving away. We're going to do a couple giveaways tonight. We have not done giveaways in a, in a long while, time. Yeah. Yep. Show them what they'll win. Well, Show them what they'll win, what they've won, Bob. Well, what they potentially could win. Right. Goodies, 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 goodies. 
freeze dried goodies Oops. from Thrive Life. We got pineapple. We got cranberry crunch. Very parfait mix. And believe it or not, this is going to sound weird, but they are delicious. And it's carrot fruit crisps. Yeah. We're going to give those away a little bit later. And and Brad is really having a hard time getting re get giving these away. The pomegranate yes. yogurt bites. Yeah, well, he loves those. And and honestly, I think that I have an addiction to sugar, like actual processed sugar. Yeah. Because um, I I love gumballs. Yeah. And I, oh man, I can I can eat some gumballs. Well, and you don't eat them jelly in, beans. Like, jelly beans, yeah. So I'm trying Starburst to Starburst jelly beans. I'm trying to use the Thrive Life food because mm -hmm. it's great. It's just that <clears throat> I need to have it sitting at my desk where I work instead of. Gumballs. Gumballs. Like, they're sitting right there. Mm -hmm. So, when yeah. we're done, take the gumballs and leave the goodies over there. Okay. So but we, we are, have to give those away. We are going to give those away. We've got more. That's we have plenty true. more. We do have more. We have plenty more. So, okay, guys. Semper Fi. Uh, homesteading with the Herberts. Semper Fi to you. However, I, I am going to tell you uh, the five-second version of my Marine Corps story mm -hmm. because I, I am a huge fan of the military, uh, but... And I did go into the Marine Corps, but I did not graduate from the Marine Corps. It was not my choosing. Uh, but I do not have the high honor of saying that I'm a Marine, uh, and I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to fake being a Marine because I'm not. Uh, what happened was I was in the band. In, uh, basically in high school, I was really good at playing the saxophone. Right. So I was like, I want to be in the best band in the entire world. And I was good enough, so I actually went to Jacksonville, the naval base there in Jacksonville, and you have to audition. And I auditioned on my saxophone, and they said, okay, now you can go to basic training, and which I did, but you have to jump through a bunch of hoops in order to make that happen. And because it's such a weird MOS, and my uncle was a full bird colonel, oh, um, I basically said, that, you know, they said, if you make it through boot camp, then you're not, you know, if you make it through boot camp and you graduate, you are guaranteed this MOS. It's a weird one. They have to set it aside. It costs a lot more money for them to set it up just because of the way the jobs work. Um, so I went into the Marine Corps boot camp at Paris Island, and um, it was basically when the first Gulf War broke out. I was there for about three weeks, mm -hmm. and then the first Gulf War broke out, and I remember drill instructor Staff Sergeant Waters calling me into his office and said, I understand that you have a unique position. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me what was going on, and he said that no one but no one is getting any MOS guaranteed uh, until, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen with this Gulf War thing. Because they didn't know. I mean, they, didn't, they had no idea what it was going to be like. And so I had the opportunity to either stay and ride it out and go, okay, I'm going to be in the infantry, and then forsake my music career. Or, you know, roll the dice, go home, stay. And I just said, I appreciate the haircut and the awesome food, but I'm going to go home. Yeah. And so. <laughs> the awesome food. <laughs> weight loss program. <laughs> I lost a lot of weight fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But so all that to say that I'm a huge, huge, you know, supporter of the military, mm -hmm. but I cannot and do not suggest that I am a Marine because I am not, even though I regret it. I do regret it. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway. Joe is asking when our cow is going to have her baby, and she is due in early May. So. Oh. Yeah. Cow. Cow. Yes, Macy. Okay. Yeah. For those that have gophers, use double bubble bubble gum. I have no idea what's going on there, but it sounds <laughs> impressive. <laughs> okay. All right. That's I'm, so funny. <laughs> to give them like probably to, so they go away. Gophers like permanently. Probably. Permanently. Yeah. I'm guessing. That's hysterical. So anyway, our main topic tonight, guys, we really wanted to talk about cows. Um, I know a lot of you guys are homesteaders. A lot of you have a dream of being in a more self-reliant life. And so we were going to talk about our experience of having a dairy cow, having a beef cow. And so once again, I didn't see if anybody chimed in, but out of the folks there, were there a bunch of people that said they I have think, had cows? I think so. I think there was even one person that milks 128 cows. Whoa. Yeah. Your hands must be incredibly strong. What? It's ridiculous. <laughs> they don't true. milk them by hand. Why not? <sighs> Actually, I want to come back to this, but we were talking to a gentleman today 
Because the new thing, the latest, greatest rage, is these robotic milkers. Oh, my gosh. And I'm not talking like a robot sitting down there doing that. It's, mm -hmm. it's crazy. We'll talk about it later. But let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about beef cattle to start okay. with, because I think beef cattle are by far a lot easier. Yes, I think they're a lot easier because you don't have to, um, you don't have to, you have to feed them, yes, um, but you don't have to tend to them closely twice a day. You have to make sure they have food and water on a daily basis, but that's pretty much it. Well, let, you know, let's, let's back up. Okay. Let's talk about the positives and the negatives of having a beef cow. Mm -hmm. One of the positives for us that's a huge thing is it's fresh, good food that mm -hmm. we know exactly mm -hmm. what went into that animal. Yep. We know exactly what food it ate, um, what their water contents were, um, <laughs> you know. Medicines. Medicines, you know, I mean. We try our darndest never to give antibiotics unless absolutely necessary. Unless they're really hurting. Right, unless it's absolutely necessary. We try to, you know, if it's a wound, we'll clean it with um, sovereign silver, um, that kind of stuff. But we, we try our darndest not to give antibiotics because we don't want that in our food. Right. Um, and well, we don't do growth hormones in any way. No way. No. No. And <laughs> we're very careful, too, that the um, what they get, they get grass. They get grass, grass, grass. We'll give them a little bit of grain or a small <laughs> amount of crushed corn mm -hmm. just as a treat right. to get them to do what we want them to do. Right, because if the cows got out, we want them, we want to be able to shake, shake bucket. the bucket <laughs> and they just to come running. Yep. You know, if like a lot of beef cows are out in the field, they don't have anything, they don't have um, contact with humans a lot. We want to be able to move our cows around easily. We want our children to be able to move our cows around easily, you know, and we want the cows to respect our family as well as us respect them. Now we need to hit the pause button right there because yeah. I can I can feel people going, what? They allow their kid? Hold on, time out. Time First out. of all, they all know where they can go and where mm -hmm. they cannot go. I'm talking about the children. Yes. And they all know what they're allowed to do in what areas that are safe mm -hmm. and so don't freak out thinking that like Ruth's out there no. with a bucket and letting Macy no. you know the thousand pound cow walk over her no 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 no, no. no, no. no time out it's I'm talking about our older children um, even even Caleb in who is 10 years old doesn't go out there it's it's mm -hmm. Brad me Claire and Hope and we're all taller so those are the, you know, it's, it's the taller, but I want to be able to, I want our kid those kids to know, you know, how to bring the cows in and I want the cows to actually listen to the kids and mm -hmm. us. And so that's how we've worked with those cows. But, Cat lover, will you make beef tallow when you slaughter your cow? We, we use every bit as, as mm -hmm. much as we can for everything mm -hmm. we can. We did so with the pigs too. Yeah. Uh, and, and we'll get into some of that as well here in just mm -hmm. a little bit, but, yeah. um, just moving forward, um, other positives. Now, this one is probably outside of the actual food. Mm -hmm. This is probably the biggest one, and I, I doggone near say it's close to being as as big. The morality of the meat you're eating, and and what do I mean by morality? If you guys have ever watched any of these shows where they actually show you what big commercial meat packing places you know, these humongous feedlots, what these animals go through is, Awful. it's flat out sinful. Mm -hmm. You know, and I understand there's that whole balance between what people are willing to pay for at a, a supermarket versus what the industry is going to give you versus, you know, we have to do it this way or else we can't get the price there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that whole crisscross of what people are willing to pay. I get that. Yeah. And I'm I'm not I'm not discounting that and I'm not even I'm not even saying for those people the the, the farmers that do that I wish they wouldn't do that but I'm saying if you got to do what you got to do. I get it. I understand. Um and you know do what you got to do. But for us there's no way that I could see what goes on and then feel good about giving my kids, you know, a hamburger that I know the hell that that animal went through. The mm -hmm. antibiotics that it's pumped through, the abuse, mm -hmm. they have insane <clears throat> amounts of, you know, 
sores and living in g literal filth. They're they're li they're standing in manure and urine, and it's that's not healthy and, and, for the animal. And not, but in it's any not way. all of them too. So, but I just want to make sure that we make so people don't think we're picking on any anybody. No, not at all. No. It's just you see these things, and you can't unsee them. Right. Right. I mean. The antibiotics, they have sores, they mm -hmm. stay in filth. A lot of them don't ever even see the light of day, ever. No. You know, depending on if you're talking about a turkey or if you're mm -hmm. talking about, you know, meat chickens, you know, those things. And they... Or milk cows. Milk cows. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I understand, trust me, I'm not throwing mm -hmm. stones. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that for us, for us it's not going to happen. We want to be able to raise our animals differently and feed our family differently. Yeah. Um, well, and yeah. I don't even, if, even if I could remember the name of the show that we saw, there was there were several. We saw a bunch of them all at once. Mm -hmm. But there's a bunch of different documentaries that they took, like, you know, the uh, secret cameras in because, you know, there's no way that they're going to let them in willingly to, to no. film. Mm -mm. And just the mechanized way that they will, like chickens, there's just, I don't even want to get into it, but let's just say it's not a thing that we feel that, you know, we can do. And so the reality is you're faced with a decision. Mm -hmm. Do you stop eating meat mm -hmm. or do you do it on your own? Right. Or maybe you don't mind paying a premium price and you find a farmer who you know is treating those animals awesome. Mm -hmm. right. And that's a, that's a viable opportunity, mm -hmm. an option, just not for us because right. of money and we have the property to be able to do it now david is asking what's the kind of what's the best kind of beef cow to have on one acre well i can tell you what we had when we were on one acre um, we had a dexter cow but it was not really a beef cow they actually call it, they call it a mixed purpose it's, it's actually a dual purpose you can use this kind of an animal for milk and meat uh, they at at, a, at their peak dexter cows will give two gallons of milk a day which is perfect for a smaller family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's funny, when we had a Dexter cow, she was still giving us a gallon and a half, and it was still a lot of milk. Yeah. So, but Dexter cows are perfect dual purpose animals. But I want to add to that, and I'll mm -hmm. even maybe even challenge what you're saying. Okay. If you have one acre, you can have any daggone cow you want. True. However, the problem is going to be a few things dang good fencing. Very good fencing, yes. And you're going to have to feed them. Yes. Because one acre is not going to be enough to feed a full-size cow to bring it to market, uh, weight. market weight if right. it's a full-size cow. It's just not going to be enough. Yeah. There won't be enough grass. Right. You're going to have to supplement with hay and grain. Um, but you also, please, please, please check your zoning. Check That's your why zoning. We're in That's Wisconsin. why we're in Wisconsin. Otherwise, we'd still be in, well, in Ohio. Them, give them, you want to give them the, the five-second version? <laughs> okay. So we're in Ohio, we're in a very, very rural area. And so we had our goats and our chickens and our rabbits and our mini Dexter cow, or our Dexter cow. And uh, <coughs> about a year later, we zoning get a letter. Changed. The zoning changed saying you can't do that anymore. Um, and she's skipping over our jerk neighbor who okay, I'm, pushed I'm, all this behind the scenes that we didn't know. Right. I, I just shortened it, okay? I know, I know. <laughs> so I we got a letter, it. zoning changed, and hence why we're on 30 acres in Wisconsin. So a year and a half later. And it was because of zoning. It was because of zoning. So please make sure you check your zoning before you get any, ag any agricultural yeah. animal. Yeah. However, rabbits are not considered an agricultural animal. So you can have rabbits without any zoning issues at all. They're pets. If you're looking to get into some kind of... Right protein production right. that's not beans right. or whatever, yeah. you know, then then you rabbits are considered differently. Right. Um, so all that to say that, you know, when you when we look at the positives, you know, the, the quality of the food, uh, the no meds in the animal, if if there's an issue that it needs attention from a veterinarian, we know exactly what's happening. And in most cases we are doing the actual work because we don't want all that junk being pumped into the animal. Right, right. And the morality thing, that's that's a huge positive. Right. That's a huge positive. Um, and, and I got to say this again, just because I'm seeing some comments skim through here. 
Nobody's busting on the farmers. No, no, no. no. Nope. It's it's how they can make and, a living. And it, and it's not even that. Right. Nobody's picking on any one specific person. Mm -hmm. If you know, I I know plenty of farmers who are awesome, awesome. They treat their animals great. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That but that's none of my business. Right. You know, exactly. It, it's none of my business. I, we're just conveying what we choose for ourselves. Exactly. Um, it, okay. I want to I want to go back to because I had said that. You know, with a Dexter, um, you have to give them hay and grain. Well, Joint Chief says grass-fed is better. Yes, grass-fed is better. However, for a beef cow, you do want to give them a bit of grain the last couple of months before you take them to the um, butcher because then it gives them a good marbling. You know, it gives them some good fat in their, in their meat. Um, and they don't get a lot of grain. You know, a couple of, of you know, quarts. A day is all they would get, right. but it's just that little bit. 90, 99% of their food is is grass and hay. Yeah. There's <coughs> one quick thing here. I, I know Jan's here, and, and Jan's been here a long time. I see yeah. your comments, your Jan. Your comments I'm are showing right up. Now. It's just we were we were in the middle of something, so we we weren't we were not getting to any questions, but yeah. we can we no, can we're still, try we're and still go back. Keep plugging away. Yeah, but we please gotta... put your comments in all caps, and I'll you know or your yep. not your comments, your questions in all caps. Okay. So. Uh, are farmers subsidized in the U.S.? That's an excellent question. Most are for different things. It depends on the industry. It depends on, mm -hmm. like corn is heavily subsidized. Yeah. Corn is heavily subsidized. Yeah. Yeah. Um, certain things are and certain things are not. It just really mm -hmm. depends on whatever politician got his wheels greased. Right, 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 right. You know? Right. Um, okay, so yeah. other positives. Now, this is a big one, too. This is not underneath the... the um, well, it is underneath the, the health of the food and the morality, uh, but the cost. Yeah. We, when you're talking cost, people, it, it's, it's not even comparable. Um, the last time we just did a, um, we had a smaller cow. It wasn't like an Angus. It was a smaller cow, just a Jersey. Mm -hmm. And um, you knew not the best meat, you know, uh, beef cattle. Uh, no, it's hope. not a meat breed. Is mm -hmm. what is what he means, like Angus, and there's there's a lot of different big. meat breed or beef breeds. Uh, Jersey is a dairy breed. However, when you know you've got bulls, then you turn them into steers, and they mm -hmm. the beef is fantastic. Well, it's great. Yeah, but, but let's talk about the cost of right. it. Right now, um, when we just processed this one cow, it was not that big, but um, how big was it? I cannot remember hanging weight but the meat that we got back all of the the meat we got back frozen and zip you know uh all done all Ready done 350 pounds okay and it ended up costing us less than two dollars a pound it was like a dollar it was 88 cents a pound I just for, just for the beef that didn't include hay and grain costs okay but we did get quite a bit of uh grain on from uh, didn't we get stuff from Don? We did. We bought it at a better, yeah. We a got it. We rate. got yeah. We got it at a really good at, at a good uh, price. So in all in all, we paid probably a dollar twenty five a pound. Okay, now, but what you need to understand first of all, mm -hmm. that's three hundred and whatever pounds. Three hundred fifty pounds. So when we did all the math and figured everything out, a mm dollar -hmm. twenty something a pound. Okay, mm -hmm. keep in mind that's not just for ground beef. That's for steaks, lots and lots of steaks. That is not for just steaks. That's also the big old cuts that you use for pot roast. It's also for prime rib. We got, what, six of them? Yes. They were huge. Yeah. Huge. And then I think we got 60 packages of ground beef of two, of pounds, two, two pound packages mm -hmm. of ground beef. Um, we got uh, minute steaks. We got soup bones. We got all the, or we got, we got the liver, the heart. Do we want to tell what the other thing we got? <laughs> what was for school? For Claire's anatomy class, um, I asked for the eyeballs, <laughs> free of charge, of course. Because well, they didn't. <laughs> she had to do. She had to do a project for yeah. anatomy, and yeah. and it was one of the options. We're like, perfect. We're getting ready to have this. Exactly. Cow. They needed needed eyeballs. I got them. Got two. So anyway, um, but yeah, the the meats that we got are fantastic. Uh, T bone steaks. Uh, sirloin steaks, chuck roasts, um, blade roasts are my all-time favorite. Absolutely love blade roasts. And the steaks have been great. Yeah. 
Um, okay, here's a good question. Loving Ivy, Ivy Farms. So the 88 cents. Yes. Was that, was what, uh, they're asking the, what the meat guy charged. That is what the meat guy charged. Yep. He, he charged 54 cents a pound hanging weight. Um, and then there was a kill fee. Mm-hmm. And I think that's it. Yeah. So that is the yeah. 88 cents. Now, yeah. and, and you guys may go, well, what about the cost of the cow? Well, up here, you can literally buy baby cows for 20 bucks. $20. And I know yeah. that sounds weird, mm -hmm. but they're everywhere. Yeah. There are, there are tons of dairies up here. Um, and you can, you can pick any farmer you would like and they'll sell you one 20 to $50 um, for a bull. And then you castrate it yourself. Yep. Um, Matter of fact, Roy, we're raising a little cow mm -hmm. for Roy and his his lovely bride right yeah. now. Yeah, he's oh. one of the moderators in here. Mr. E is so cute. <laughs> he is cool. Yeah. Oh he's, yeah. He's the sweetest little cow. He really he is. He really is sweet. Hope Hope, Hope bottle fed him, and he's just he's really really sweet. Oh, and that's then that's another thing. I mu I we have to go back. You can get um, these bulls and steers. Um, really inexpensively when they're only a couple of weeks old. So you do have to bottle mm -hmm. feed them. Um, and that makes it great. The, the cows are a lot more friendly yeah. um, if you're bottle feeding them. Yeah. They're a lot more tame, more gentle. Um, I know our older steers, they're really sweet. And they come up to... They come up... Not, not in flavor yet. Sweet no, in no, temperament. No, no, no. Sweet in temperament. They, they're a little higher than my waist now. And so they always put their face up so that I can scratch their neck. They absolutely love it when I scratch their neck. But well, and anyway. we can we can get into the issue of how do you deal with raising an animal that you know is going to be for food? Right. How do you not get attached? Mm -hmm. And the way I would say for me, because it was very hard in the beginning when we first the very first animal I ever killed was when we were processing chickens for meat. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, it was not an easy thing to do, but we honestly, we, we prayed, and we just thanked God for his provision. <coughs> and we asked that, you know, the, 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 the minimal amount of pain would be had, and, and we were grateful for the way God provided. Yeah. And we went through with it, and, mm -hmm. and it was not easy. And it still, it still jars you just a little bit in the yeah. beginning, and, but we've only done that for four seasons, five seasons. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm sure that it'll get to the point where you just understand this is food and you're grateful and thank you, God. Mm -hmm. And um, you treat the animal with as utmost respect as you can and you just do what you need to do. Right. Um, but cows are a little bit different because mm -hmm. they're they're not like a chicken. A chicken's kind of just a chicken. It doesn't have the same personality. Right. Right. A cow's got those big eyes and it's like, oh. I know. They just melt your heart. But, you know, we... And somebody said, call him dinner. Yes. That's we, how we started. Our first steer, we called him Stewie because he was stew meat. Um, then we have a T-bone. Mr. E is M-R-E. He's an M-R-E. So, um, and Turbo, just that just kind of stuck. So it wasn't really. Uh, that's, that's Brad going, hey, Turbo, or something <laughs> exactly, like that. Making exactly. Something up. Um, let me go back real quick. There was a question on how old. It is. Do when you, you get them when do they're you, little? When you castrate, no. When you cast. Oh, when you castrate, castrate them. Yeah. Um, you can castrate them when they're a week old. You can castrate them when they're um, two months old. You not too much older because then they're really hard to handle. Um, not, imagine that they don't want to give them up. <laughs> well, and they they're really not fans of having their legs held, and you got to hold one of their legs to be able to to band them. Um, but one thing I do want to stress is that. Um, you don't want to stress them, then cast, then you know, then band them, and then put them through some more stress. Mm -hmm. You know, because too many stresses all at once can make are, them sick. Can make them sick. Yeah. Like, don't change from milk from the cow to uh, calf milk replacer. I always do that calf replacer. So you got to you got to make sure you're not having too many changes. So. Yeah, and uh, so. Those are what we view as the positives for having your own mm -hmm. beef cattle. Mm -hmm. And also, too, um, not to sound too callous, but it's an investment. Yes. It's an absolute investment. Mm -hmm. 
when you consider like we have the fortune of having access to a big area where mm -hmm. they can graze during the summer so we don't have to feed them during the summer right and we don't have to really there's no fee for the water you just mm -hmm. fill up the water and then then, then they're there and right. so we only have to feed them when it's cold out and we give them grain as treats mm -hmm. so the food cost is extremely low for yes, us extremely low so yeah it's it's been great um and you know we We've had the Dexter cows uh, for milk, but we haven't had them for beef. And we've only had the Jersey and a Holstein for beef. So I can't really say which one's better or out of any of the cows. That's just what, or right. any of the cattle, I should say, not right. cows. But. Right. <laughs> so, okay, now let's talk a little bit about the negatives because I don't want to paint only sunshine and lollipops. No, there's there's struggles that go along with it. There are some struggles that go along with having beef cows. Yeah. Now, um, this one, uh, it, it's it's okay. Good fences. This is probably mm -hmm. the biggest one. Yeah. Make sure your fences are intact. Make sure your lines are taut. Um, that Get you're a good shocker. A good shocker. A real good shocker. Yeah. And make sure your weeds are cut down because it's gonna it's gonna ground out the the wire and you're not gonna have um, a good enough shock to train those animals on. Yeah. Right now, half of three quarters of our fence is buried in snow. It's completely buried in snow. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to go anywhere. They're just no. like, why would I walk away from the food? Right. The food is there. They're not gonna go anywhere. I actually, right. unplug the fence. Yeah. Here's a good question, actually, from Open Gate Farms. Said, how much hay in the winter? Well, obviously, it depends on the cow. However, ours. I can tell you. I can tell you. For a milking cow, they need however much the cow weighs. That's how much food it needs in one month. So our cow, Macy, is 1,000 pounds. She needs one round bale every month. Now, we have seven animals out there eating hay. But she's the biggest. She's the biggest. Um, and then we have two donkeys, um, a heifer calf that just actually turned one year old today. Oh, yeah. Cutie. Um, that's Dottie. And then we have three steers that are smaller. So we go through about one round bale a week. Yeah. So um, that's... that's <laughs> That's how much food they need. And then if you're milking a cow, um, then you need to supplement with grain. So that, that's, and that, you know, honestly, that, it, that is- During a, the winter. Dur well, anytime a cow is milking, you need to give them grain to, to give them good minerals. Yeah, and, you know, round everything out. Round everything out. And it's also a good way to make the cow stand still. Yeah, they're not gonna <laughs> kick, they're happy. Right, well, yeah, yeah. she still kicks. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, um, Here's the thing, you know, if you've ever had fresh from a farm, cold oh, milk, man. oh my gosh. There's nothing like it. You, I, the, the only way that I can describe it being a nerdy musician is remember when you went from cassettes to CD, CDs? <laughs> it's that big of a difference where you're like, oh my you're so funny. i'm hearing all kinds of things i never heard before oh my gosh it's a huge difference <sighs> yeah it it is a huge difference um going from store-bought pasteurized milk mm -hmm. to raw milk with the cream still in it oh my goodness gracious yeah it's delightful so and, and what really stinks is macy's gonna have to get dried off here uh by the end of march and i'm not real happy about that <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, the other piece to our situation, mm -hmm. guys, is one of the big reasons why we are so insistent on having our own food sources is mm -hmm. because of our daughter, Grace. Yeah. She was born with a bunch of physical problems. She's, she eats through a G-tube. And so raw foods are the thing that has been keeping her healthy. Mm -hmm. We give her Moringa. We give her <laughs> Roundup Thrive Life food powder in her <laughs> milk, but she gets our, the milk right from our cow. And so another reason why it's so important for us to make sure there are no weird medicines going into the cow. Yeah. And um, it's the strangest thing. Ever since we switched her diet over from Pediasure, which is what the doctors issued, and we started giving her the raw milk with the Moringa mm -hmm. and the Thrive Life food, she doesn't get sick. No. She used to get pneumonia several times a year, like four, four or times. five times. Yeah, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. yep. Now it's like, nope. We all get sick. She doesn't get sick. No, 
Not at all. Nope. So, you know what? I'm looking at this, and, and there's no real way that we can actually go into uh, the dairy side of things no. tonight. But let's talk about a little bit about some of the challenges that we've had. Okay. Um, in terms of beef cattle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I would say one of the big ones was a silly one that we probably could have avoided easily had we been thinking with our brains. How do you get them into the trailer when it's time to go to the... You feed them in the trailer. Yeah, about a week, uh, about a week before you take them to the butcher, you start putting their grain, you put a, a feeding trough in the trailer at the end of the trailer and you start feeding them in there. And that's how. Because we learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. All right, those cows don't want to get in there. So we're literally out there trying to wrangle them in with ATVs, and and they just don't want to go in that tiny little dark block box. No, not they at all. They just don't want to go in there, and right. I don't blame them. Right. Simply Jan is asking, do we prefer Dexter over any others? Um, we've no. only had Dexters and Jerseys. I prefer the taste of Angus beef just because I know the difference and we've had it in restaurants. Mm -hmm. And the flavor of it to me is a better flavor. But the ground beef that we've gotten, the it's best I've ever had in, yeah. in my life. Yeah. We, we didn't ask for them to like cut the fat off or anything, but there's almost no fat, like no fat. Whenever we cook with the ground beef, we have to add fat to right. recipes or else it just they don't work. Right. There is there the the percentage is probably a 95 5. There is very little fat. It's oh, yeah. very delicious. Um, however, all of the steaks and everything that we have um, are fantastic. What's the matter? Oh, I just was reading a comment from Franklin, North Carolina, Brad, yeah. brace yourself. We use 2000 tons of grade 1 alfalfa in a year. How many cows? He's got one very hungry how cow. How much? How many cattle? I should He's say. He's got one, very big, <laughs> very hungry. Okay. How long does the raw milk keep? Uh, with the cream. Um, Two weeks. Actually, um, it never actually goes bad. It becomes sour, and sour milk you can use it for pancakes, biscuits. I would say never. I would okay. say it doesn't for a while. It, okay, maybe two weeks. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe even a month, but. We have had stuff in there that that gets lost in the very back. That's a month old. I'll use it for biscuits. Yeah. So. Um, it is it is quite a shock though when you don't look at the date on the top of the milk and you pour it into your coffee for creamer <laughs> and you're like, go! <laughs> 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 oh my goodness gracious! But yeah. Um, but okay. The thing with pasteurized milk, pasteurized milk goes rancid. For raw milk goes sour, and it's still usable. It doesn't taste as good. It tastes sour, um, but you can, like I said, you can use it for cooking. Um, but I would say I wouldn't drink anything over a week old because it get it starts to get sour. Right. Yeah. Right. So. So okay. Other challenges. Um, obviously, we talked about the cold weather. Mm -hmm. um, one of the one of the favorite favorite challenges of having the cows in the cold weather is frozen dookie that's awesome frozen dookie mm -hmm. yeah there's no you, there's no it, you, it's gonna be there it's like death and taxes frozen dookie will be with you brothers and sisters it's the all dookie, right it's the all dookie right. shall accompany you it's all right on your journey it's all right we got shovels in the spring it's all good yeah it's it is what it is <laughs> right so I mean, but that's only if, obviously, you live in a place where it gets cold enough where you can't deal with it. Right. Or if you have a heated barn. Right. Which we don't. Then the other <laughs> the other negative side, I would just say, is um, getting the feed. If you're mm -hmm. going to feed them all grass and that's right there mm -hmm. and you got it, great. You yep. know, but if you're going to have to buy, you know, barrels and barrels of, of grain or corn you got to take that into account. There's logistics involved. Yep. Try and find a feed mill where you can get it in bulk prices. Yep. Um, just bring some empty um, uh, food grade barrels that have the lids that go on top and they will fill it straight into there and they will give you a good price. Yep. I know our feed mill does. It's just having that much cash all at once. Not always a good thing. Not always a good thing. So we have to ration it out over over the month. But 
you know, we have a feed mill that's nearby and, and they have a really good deal on their grain. So got to stop you right there, mom, because yeah. we are just about Out of time. five minutes and change away. And I wanted to make sure that we gave away some of our delicious yeah. freeze dried food. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing, guys, um, as you know, or maybe you don't know, we are trying really hard to uh, grow this community mm -hmm. uh, without getting weird. Right. I do believe our country is in trouble. I think that there's a lot of infrastructure issues with the electrical grid and frankly, just our debt that could be really problematic in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we are trying so hard to encourage you to get a little more self-reliant, learn some skills, learn how to yeah. grow some food, do all these things. And so we're trying to grow the community. So in an effort to do that, we want to, uh, extend to you the possibility of winning some mm -hmm. uh, this Thrive Life food bags. We've got, we've got, we're going to give away two sets of three. This is my favorite. Oh, the very, very, parfait. very, very parfait. Oh my gosh, it's so good. There's so good. almonds in there. Granola, coconut, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries probably. Oh yeah. And then coconut bites. This one, the cranberry crunch, I think this is my favorite. Cranberries, yeah. coconut, really almonds, good. and yeah. it's just silly. Um, so, but what we're going to ask guys is, oh, what are we going to cook on Thursday? That was in the intro to the video, mm -hmm. but we're going to be doing cheesy sausage muffins. Biscuits. Biscuits? Biscuits? Muffins. Muffins. Yeah, biscuits, muffins, yeah. Um, but here's the thing. If you would like to be entered for, to win, mm -hmm. uh, the possibility to win some of these things, we're going to give away three of them each. Mm -hmm. And all we're asking you to do is whatever social media, we need you to do two things. Whatever social media you are on, we ask you to share a video or a link or, hey, have you checked out Big Family Homestead on YouTube? On If you're on you know, Facebook, do it on Facebook. Grab a video clip or stick it over there and whatever media that you have, spread the word for us. And with every one of those you do, you're going to come back to this video stream, mm -hmm. put in there into the, into the description, not the description, the comment section. Yeah. <laughs> what you did, I shared, blah, blah, blah. That is one entry. Mm -hmm. So if you did five, you get five entries. Yep. If you did 10, you get 10 entries. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you could you could lie and say that you did all this stuff, right. but you know what? That's between you and God. We'll never know. Um, so we're just asking that you be honest. But if you go and share that, next week, we're going to do a random drawing of that. So however many are in there, you know, we're going to believe in faith that you're not, you know, pulling the wool over our eyes and hope that you will uh, join with us and hopefully win some goodies. So, that said, it is uh, 7.57. That's unbelievable. We're going to we're gonna head out, guys. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we're going to head out. We're going to jump on over there to the Self-Reliant Roadshow. Yep. And uh, before you we go, you guys know that we're a family who believes, so if that's not your thing, we're going to pray real quick. So, be warned, you can stick around. If not, we're going to pray. So you got to go. Bye. If not, here we go. Father God, we come for you tonight, and I am just so grateful for each and every one of these folks. I would ask that you would uh, just pour your spirit into their lives and let them know just how much you love them. Show them anew how real you are and how much you want to be involved in their lives. Jesus, we love you. Father, I praise you in spirit. Man, I welcome you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. So, quick recap. Down there, you know the drill. Yep. All right, so next week we're hoping to, way, uh, to give away. Yeah, Thrive Life Consultants yes. are yeah, eligible. Anybody's Absolutely. eligible. Everybody's eligible. Yeah. So make sure you put it back in the, the comment section or mm -hmm. else you won't get credit. So that's it, guys. You have a great night. Have an amazing day.